The Astronaut's Guide to the Flat Earth Theory by the liar on the wire, Chris Hadfield. And straight off the bat, before we even play Chris's video, we've got problems. One, the flat earth isn't a theory. The flat earth is simply demonstrable science that can be tested and verified by all. The results of which prove the globe's scientifically impossible. I'll call you the three fundamentals very quickly. One, tower cranes and pendulums do not have the ability to be dead still and plumb whilst doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions. You can't have an air pressure system next to a vacuum without some kind of solid wall to separate the two. And large standing bodies of water do not have the ability to display convexity upon its surface. Three demonstrable facts that can be tested and verified by all the results of which prove the globe scientifically impossible. That's the flat earth. Nothing theoretical. 100% demonstrable. And that's why, of course, we also get misrepresentations like this pizza dish earth with tin foil hovering in a vacuum, cited as the flat earth, yet no one on this earth actually believes that tosh. You see the problems here, and this is coming with the so-called hero from space. But when we actually look at it, it's obvious. We've got a pantomime star here trying to save his tarnished reputation. Very badly, as we're about to see. So let's have a look. When the very first balloon was launched uh, that could carry people, it was in Paris in the late 1700s. And it was Montgolfier, the brothers. They had hydrogen balloons and hot air balloons. And it was the cutting edge of science. It I think well, we're just quickly talking about balloons. We'll quickly go somewhere and we'll, we'll jump back, Chris. Bear with me. Here's a quick shot, 20 miles up, showing the Earth, obviously not being a ball, which of course is demonstrably true, and showing the Sun to be small and local. We've got a hot spot there. Again, this can be tested and verified by all with demonstrations of water. And of course, anyone can send a balloon up as well. We know for a scientific fact, any supposed curve is optical and not physical. That is a demonstrable scientific fact. Sorry to interrupt your exciting story, Chris. I just thought while you're on the subject of balloons, I thought I might as well destroy quickly the globe Earth theory using a balloon. You've got to love it. Anyway, back to your exciting story, pal. It was the cutting edge of technology. We just learned how to capture a gas like hydrogen that would be lighter than air. You could make a balloon. And the first balloon rose and Ben Franklin was there and it was huge and magnificent. All of those scientists... And it rose, but it got out of control, and it went and landed out in the countryside, 15 miles away from Paris. And the peasants there attacked it with pitchforks, because they thought it was an alien coming from space. The schism between learned understanding and scientific pursuit and the common perception of what was normal was that close, just 15 miles away. There was an enormous gap between what we knew and what we were doing, and what a lot of folks knew yet, or what had, what had become part of common knowledge. So I can't speak for the folks with the pitchforks in your story. I simply stand by what is true. And because of that, there's no gaps. And I won't fall for the propaganda or the brainwashing that you're trying to push. I.e. that you're, anyone who questions the globe narrative is the people with the pitchforks in your story. No, shame on you for hinting at that. We're all scientists. We can all test and verify things for ourselves. Just because someone wears a white coat doesn't mean they're any better than anyone else. Particularly if they're claiming they get different results from scientific demonstrations than every other person on this earth. And of course, they won't be able to demonstrate it. And of course, they'll be on the payroll. So we're all scientists. And none of us are the people portrayed in your story with a pitchfork. If anything, it's the globe believers and pushers and propagandists who are the clowns with the pitchforks. Shame on you for trying to reverse that and invert that. I know you're trying to save your tarnished space pantomime career, which is literally in tatters now, but you're just digging yourself into a deeper and deeper hole. But please, continue. There's nothing new about uh, 
about the speed with which we're inventing things and the ability for people to understand what's going on. There's a, there's a recent populist sort of wave of, of, uh, of anti-science and as if that's something. Now, again, another misrepresentation. I stand by, I'm only speaking for myself here, I stand by demonstrable science, tested and verified by all. That's not anti-science. What you're trying to do again is tar people who found out the globe using demonstrable science who don't fall for your sophist scientific demonstrations, your explanations, your cartoons and your excuses. You're trying to tar the people who have called that out and found it out for the sophist tosh that it is as anti-science when in fact they're the real scientists, the people that stand by things that can be tested and verified by all. You, the globe believers, are the anti-science. You're the ones that cite sophistry. You're the ones that have got fallacious logic residing inside your fucking spacious heads. So again, trying to lie and misrepresent. And this is supposedly a Canadian hero, but he's a liar on a wire. New. It's mostly because social media has given everybody uh, what appears to be an equal voice. Um, on the oh, People have shared the space fails all across the internet. People have shared scientific demonstrations all across the earth. And of course, we found out the globe's impossible and space is a silly charade. One that you starred and participated in many times, which is why we got you on our screen on damage control. Of, of Hyde Park in London, there's Speaker's Corner. And that used to be the internet where you could go stand there and yell any stupid thing you wanted. And if people- Imagine going there, Speaker's Corner. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Tower cranes are upside down on a spinning, wobbling, oscillating ball. Large standing bodies of water have the ability to have the ability to display convexity upon its surface. And you can have an air pressure system next to a vacuum without any kind of solid separation. They think you were fucking bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. And they'd be right wanted to gather around and listen that was their choice but if you if you weren't interested in whatever that person was spouting then you didn't need to listen but now internet has sort of turned everything into the speaker's corner so you really your composure you're slipping a little bit with your composure champ you slipped out of your role there your false confidence we saw the cracks you're done for you have to just decide what what are you going to listen to and what aren't you and if someone decides to put forward some stupid idea that is patently false, like if somebody says, the sky is orange, you can have an argument about it if you want, but, but it's, it's obviously not true. So there's really no point. I've seen plenty of orange and red skies. Again, you're not making much sense. Again, you're desperately clutching at straws trying to save this tarnished career of yours. And again, all you've done, like I said, is dug a bigger hole that you've put yourself in that you're going to be remembered for digging this hole and playing your part. Even engaging in conversation. Or if somebody says, the world is flat. If somebody says, we live on a spinning, wobbling, oscillating ball, one that's doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions, with air pressure system wrapped around it, residing in a vacuum, with large standing bodies of water displaying convectivity upon its surface, with tower cranes and pendulums upside down, perpendicular to each other, dead still and plumb, whilst doing ludicrous speeds, you would ignore them. You think they were stupid, because you know every scientific demonstration tells you that's absurd. You treat them like a reality denying nutter that they are. But Chris is trying to turn everything around, trying to be quite clever, but the cracks are showing, trying to reverse everything. But demonstrable science that can be tested and verified by all exposes you, Chris. You're going to expose yourself in a minute. We'll keep going. It's patently untrue. So there's no point in engaging in conversation. I, I agree. There's no point in engaging in any of these cannonball delusionists. I mean, imagine it. Yes, we live on a sphere that's spinning and wobbling and oscillating, doing ludicrous speeds for a vacuum. We got absolutely no science, just cartoons and explanations. Rah! Now, I think I'll avoid you, my friend. All you're doing is is giving that person credibility for something that we've not all you've done is a blatant show of military tactics how to reverse something but again demonstrable science exposes you again 
I keep saying it, you're going to expose yourself, champ. For thousands of years to not be truth. So, so I, I just, I don't even worry about it. The world is full of fascinating, interesting new discoveries and, and we're pushing the very boundaries of, of what we know. Um, Stephen Hawking, who just recently died, the work that he did in trying to understand how the universe works. Uh, yes, his theoretical stuff was incredible for the fantasists, backed up by CGI and cartoons. And of course, it's funny you cite him because he again pushed the na mainstream narrative, or did, bless him. The original thinking, the, there's so many brilliant, motivated people around that why would you engage with someone who is being deliberately ignorant? I don't mind people that just don't know. Demonstrable science isn't ignorance, my friend. You've been exposed as a liar, a reality denier, a dark space pantomime star whose career is in tatters. And you're going to have to face the repercussions of your lies and your performances, which will live forever on screen. As each day goes by, as people wake up in mass numbers to the darkness that is the globe Earth. And of course, the space pantomime industry. Oh, then they're just in the process of learning. But if someone has chosen to take the facts and be deliberately stupid about them, then I think they've discounted themselves from rational conversation. So I all of this is going to be held against you as you try to reverse things, try to paint the picture of truthful, honest individuals standing by what is with the best intentions for mankind. You try to reverse that and lie and misrepresent it. You will have to face the repercussions of your actions. Don't bother. If you wrestle with a pig, the best you can be is a pig wrestler. What is he talking about? Clearly we're dealing with someone clutching at straws, desperate. And I'll show you why. Bear with me. Now bear in mind all the garbage, the lies, the misrepresentations of what about what the flat earth Chris has just spewed. So let me set the scene. Chris is supposedly on the American built International Space Station. This Canadian legend supposedly got there on a Russian Soyuz rocket. But as we're about to see, Chris the liar on the wire Hadfield is going to expose all those countries and of course space for the charade that it is. As you're about to see, this harness loving space pantomime star is gonna expose himself. As you look, as he gets lowered off, you can see the back of Chris's top there, protruding, showing the lifting points where the weight is engaged, taking Chris's weight, taking his weight, showing that Chris is on some sort of lifting device, some sort of harness, and that he's a liar on the wire. And as a result, has exposed space and Russia and America and Canada. Let's just come back and play it in its right stop in it. Watch Chris's back. Watch the attachment points protruding, showing that it's engaging Chris's weight, lifting him back up. And of course, we lose sight of it there, although it looked a little bit glitchy. No doubt erasing the, where the cables are. But Chris, despite your 10 minute propaganda video, all you did there, mate, was lie, misrepresent, dig a hole for yourself, and essentially expose yourself as the liar on the wire. Dear, oh dear.